know, you really shouldn't walk in on a guy while he's rubbing one out in the shower unless you want to get an eyeful. I mean, maybe you should learn to shut the shower curtain so a guy can take a leak when he has to. Oh, well, maybe you should learn how to hold it unless you're willing to take the risk. Peeing should not be risky business. What? What is this? What are you doing? Why are you polishing your shoes? Hold on, Gerard. I need to figure out why the Phantasmagora isn't trying on his costume. Yeah, that's right. I said it. You're sitting around your butt instead of pulling your own weight. I'm starting to think you don't want to run a backyard wrestling league. Yeah, those shoes aren't gonna go with that outfit. Everything all right? He looked upset. Yeah, he did. Let me check his phone. You know his passcode? Of course, we know everything about each other. Except for the secrets I don't tell him. <laughs> right. Oh, it's from Rupert. Goodbye, Chaz, forever. I no longer want to have a friendship with you. Please do not contact me. I wish you all the best. Rupert. Ouch. Poor Chaz. <laughs> secret? Sure. Ted sent that text message. Neither of us like the idea of them being together as, as friends. Right, whatever. Anyway, he agreed to help me with this in exchange for a used t-shirt. Gross, why? I don't know, something about a scent? I really wasn't listening to him, but that's not important. The important thing is, Chaz is free of Rupert. Yeah, way to go. Hurting your best friend. You know, Sometimes you gotta hurt the ones you love if you know what's best for them. You might be right about that, but I don't have time to unpack that. I got an appointment with a psychic, so I'll see you later. Your mother's in pain. So much pain. That can't be right. She's dead. How much pain can she be in in heaven? How do you know she's in heaven? <gasps> Sorry. I hear her cry for help. Your help. She said you never were there for her in life, but begs for you to be there for her in death. What can I do? I, well, no. I can't say. Please, Madam Carmen. I will do whatever it takes. My mother was right. I was never there for her. I was a horrible, selfish daughter, and it cost me years with my mother. And that led me to raise a horrible, rotten son. If there's something, anything I can do, I'll do it. I must. Very well. I can craft a charm for you, but I must warn you. It will be costly. Financially for you, spiritually for me, and it is not without great risk. I'll, I'll pay it, whatever it takes. Just please help her. Very well. I will help Carla and ease her suffering in the great beyond. Wait, Carla? I know a dead Carla. <laughs> Small world. Would you please be quiet and wait your turn? Now, tell me about your son. Horatio, Ugh, what's there to tell? He was troublesome, and I suppose I only have myself to blame for it. Whoa, 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 whoa. This, this is too much. I know a dead Horatio too. I slept with him. He was kind of annoying, but you know, he was good in the sack. Do you think your Horatio and my Horatio are the same Horatio? I mean, that would be crazy. <gasps> Wait. Does that mean your Carlo and my Carlo are the same Carlo too? Oh my god! Well, hello, <laughs> not Drake. Hey, it's Willie. Yeah, I saw him when the camera was pointed down. Hey there, little guy. This is my friend Willie. Yeah, I'm a salesman. Uh, yeah, I can see you peddling your wares up in Father Angie's grill. 
probably a few other holes if you were here too, am I right? Gerard, look. I'm just glad you're having yourself a good time. You've been so bummed out lately. Now I notice things. People don't think I notice things, but I notice things, especially when it comes to people I care about. Gee, thanks, Gerard. So, Anthony in his room? He's out with Hunter at Veronica's apartment. Damn, I was just over by her place. Now I gotta go back? The things you do for people. I'm sure you'll survive. Wanna come with? No, I have to go to Mr. Gray's apartment. He's got somebody I need to talk to. After he finishes up here. George, what are you doing? <laughs> Getting front row seats. <laughs> I like this guy. Maybe he should join in. Um, yes, hello. Dream come true. Good night, Gerard. Oh, fine. Even though I threw you a whole Gerard at you. I can't believe you let him in. He said he was your friend. Well, that's hardly the word I'd use to describe what we are. Although, I do suppose you have so very few friends in the world, I should probably allow you to call me thus. Yes, very well. Henceforth, you are permitted to refer to me as your friend. Gee, thanks. With the caveat being that if someone important or influential is around, I am simply your acquaintance. She's joking. She's a kidder. You are joking, aren't you? Clearly you don't know Veronica like I do. Oh yeah, by the way, who's this? Gerard, why must you always be introduced to everyone you don't know? Well, there are only three of us here. I'm Leonard, and I'm guessing you're Gerard, though it could be slightly different. Ronnie has a way of mixing names up. She's cute that way. Ronnie? Gerard, this is my fiance. Now that you've met him and you've drank some of my coffee, you can leave. We have much to discuss, he and I. Wait, what? Fiance? Yes, yes, I'm getting married. Please do try to keep up. I had no idea. It's crazy, right? We had only been dating a few months, and she popped the question. And I couldn't say no. I'm a modern woman. She's a modern woman. Congratulations? Yes, now leave. I've already told you Hunter and Anthony are at Hunter's sex apartment. Great! Do you know the address? Why would I know where Hunter's sex apartment is? You'll have to ask Father Anglicus. Oh, he's at Mr. Gray's. Do you know where they live? Fine. I'll help you, but you must promise to leave and not to tell my brother that you've met Leonard. He hasn't met him yet. <laughs> if I didn't know any better, I'd say she was embarrassed of me. <laughs> but you don't know what you're talking about, Father Snuggles, especially in this instance. But you have family and friends who are outside waiting for you. Some of them don't even know you're in town. They've been going at this for the past two hours. It's been tit for tat between these two ever since he got here. That's awful. I know, right? So sad they can't see eye to eye. No, I, I meant her outfit. She looks so homely. I mean, where's the loud and vivacious Glenda I knew who ruined people's lives with her selfishness? Give me just a moment, Father. You know I can hear you. Maybe, but you're not listening. Maybe we should lead them to talk. Probably. But I'm not wrong. I mean, you've got this big, sexy hunk of man in front of you, pleading with you to live your life and leave this apartment, and you're just making excuses why you're more comfortable at home. I have my reasons. And you do, that's right. But that doesn't mean that they're good ones. <laughs> man, you know who I miss? Glenn. He'd never have hid himself away from the people who care about him. Uh, this is Glenn. Uh, was. She goes by Glenda now. I'm aware of that, but if this is who Glenda is, a woman who's too afraid to go out, who rejects the people who love her, who'd rather be a 1950s housewife than the star that she is? Well, I don't wanna know her. Gerard, you're being cruel. You don't have to speak for me, Father Snuggles, but he's right. You are being cruel and I cannot abide cruel. No, he's not. He's just being honest. Glenda, you're an amazing person. Funny, talented, 
but you're wasting it all by not leaving. Uh, well, and you of all people know why I can't. So tell us. I mean, we're your friends. No, 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 no. This is not the time nor the place. And oh, the world out there is just too tough. Yes. Yes, it is. It, that's how it is for everybody. But we don't end up hiding ourselves. That's not living. That's not life. You have too much to offer the world through your music, through your life. Your art! Oh, and you know that I've given that up. But does your music have to go too? And besides, Anthony really needs your help. He's in way over his head with this TV show about your life. Yeah, and did you know they're trying to cast a muscle ginger as Anthony? <gasps> Excuse me? I don't know what made you want to hide away from life, but if you stay hidden like this, we might as well have buried you back when we had Glenn's from home. I just, I don't know. I can't make promises. I, maybe. That's all any of us could ever ask for. Look at that, Glenda. Father just mansplained the meaning of life to you. And we're done here. I'm gonna take Gerard to Hunter's spare apartment. <laughs> What's up, Robin? Oh, it's you. <laughs> I thought that Wallace kid came out here hitting on me again. You mean that kid with Reese? Yeah. Jeez, what is it with you and these barely legal twinks? Yeah, I'm irresistible. <laughs> as long as I keep asking for it, this old dog keeps throwing him his bone. <laughs> Man, I like you, Robin. You and me, we're on the same page. No, we're not. My book is done. You still got pages left. Well, that's a bit maudlin for me. It is what it is, Gerard. You reach a point, you, it's hard to realize your dreams. Are you still remembering what they even were? I spent years pretending I am something I am not, and two years trying to regain what I had lost. I thought. I knew what it meant to be a man. Then I see Race, Edward, Wallace, and all y'all in it. And it occurs to me, there's no one way to be a man. It makes me sad to think it took so long to figure all this out so late. So late. You know what I'm saying, son? Why can't I get this kind of privacy when I'm jerking off? He's already gone. Not surprising. Hunter only comes over when he wants to use Edward in the dungeon. Do you think I should go check on Robin? No. You just stay put. He's my sex friend, not yours, because you've already had sex, but you're still acting like a virgin. Hunter cares a lot about you. You know this. He just has a lot on his plate right now. Maybe if I weighed 400 pounds, I could be on his plate too. Weight has nothing to do with it. Hunter likes a specific kind of man, and folk like you and me and father here, we just ain't it. Uh, excuse me. Uh, I could have sex with Hunter if I wanted to. Mm. Could you though? No, you're a little more ambiguous than submissive. Exactly. You don't identify as a slave like Edward, and, and you don't seem to be able to subject yourself to femininity and humiliation like Anthony, so you're basically in our boat. One, I do not know you, so keep your opinions to yourself, please. And two, Hunter craves masculine men. He's one of my best friends in the world. I would know this. No. Hunter craves someone he can overpower. People who identify as slaves. Edward. Or people who abuse a natural submissiveness. Anthony. Look, that doesn't sound like Hunter to me. Father, please, that sounds exactly like Hunter. Only thing I disagree with these two youths is femininity equating to submissiveness. Aren't you two supposed to be part of the woke generation? Show me one example of femininity that isn't submissive that is neither fictional or inherently masculine. Carla. I said it isn't fictional. You don't believe in Carla? No. Oh my God, I do. I think she's a very real entity. And whether she's a spirit or not, she's definitely there with all of us, you know? Go take a bath. Maybe Robin could help. No. <laughs> it, it seems pretty good that 
you and Robin are in an open situation. I mean, with your nephew and all, it seems like that would create some problems. Robin and I are in any situation. Go get my phone. I'll find Hunter for you and then you can leave. Call me crazy, but you don't seem happy, buddy. Don't call me that. We're not friends and you saying it year after year hasn't changed that. You're such a kidder. But that doesn't mean I can't see through you. You're in love. You shouldn't be so upset. God, no. Robin and I are just having fun. And sure, we thought about what a relationship between us would look like and it would be great. And then it would be over. In a year, five tops, he'd be gone and and people leave and that's fine and he would just be the most leaved he can be, but like, just shows me that there's no point in getting close to old people like him or you. You know I'm not the same age as Robin. Well, you're the same age demographic then, I don't know. I, I don't think you understand. I'm happy now. For the first time in my life, this is what happy looks like. I have Wallace living with me and he does dishes when I cook and then Robin does the laundry and that's great. That's a great setup. It's perfect. What don't you get? All right, buddy. Whatever floats your boat. Don't you forget it, buddy. Are you sure this is the place? I don't know, Reese's Find Your Phone app says that Hunter is definitely here. He's keeping tabs on him, which definitely has me concerned. Nah, that kid is lonely. Something seems off about him. Good, you know, I'm glad somebody else is noticing that. I thought it was just me. I'm gonna go to the bathroom. <gasps> you better delete that picture. I need to show Reese an example of masculine submissiveness. <laughs> How did this even happen? Look, sir, I'm sorry to say this, but I don't think there's going to be happy endings tonight for either of us. Seriously, Edward? You've been sending me dirty videos all day, and now you're going to tell me you have to work? Look, something came up with this case I'm working on, and I couldn't really say no. You know, I, I can say no when necessary. I'm not afraid to withhold consent in an unsafe or unwanted scenario, but in this case, money was involved. Well, what am I supposed to do? Believe me, I'd rather be on my knees or on my back or on all fours or any position you want, really. If it helps, I can send you a video of me eating dinner naked. That's fine. Just be safe. Hey, I know you said you didn't want me here, but I'm in the neighborhood and I am horny. Oh, yes, sir. It was nothing. Trust me. Loved every minute of it. Someday soon, Gerard. You and the father will recreate that fateful night you spent together. Just wait and see. I'm in the room right now. Oh, I know. <sighs> Gerard, Hunter says you've been looking for me all day. First, I probably should have just waited here all day for you because this was my first stop. Although I don't think the father wanted me here while he was playing with his friend. I thought Anglicus was supposed to be avoiding. That is another story for another time. Right. Um, anyway, Gerard, get to the point. Sure. Well, as you may have heard, Edward has been helping me look into the 13 people who died from my killer dom. Oh, like I was. No, because Edward was actually helping me. Although your failure to help did help me seek for advice at work, where I did learn about a psychic, but I didn't get a chance to talk to her because she was too busy bilking a client. Which brings you to your point because... Oh yeah, so you know, the client that the psychic lady was pulling a fast one on, I think that was Carla's daughter. Oh dear. She better not be breaking dishes if she's not planning on paying for them. Idiot! Of all the moronic things dirty could do! You need to come alone! Oh, my daughter is a 
vile woman, but never ever did I imagine she would subject herself to such a common flip-flap woman! Ah! So, do you think she took the news well? More importantly, do you think I should go back to the psychic and ask her for advice on the dead lovers? I'll Carla. take that as a maybe. Look at the way their muscles strain against their t-shirts as they wipe down those counters. I gotta say, I don't understand what it is about the two of them that makes you want them to be your daddies. They're them? There's so many reasons. You've never had sex with Dennis and Chaz, have you? No. <laughs> I'm happy to say I haven't. But... No, no, no. Not Dennis or Chaz. Dennis and Chaz. They are so in sync. It's like having all your holes filled at the same time by the same person. I'm gonna have to stop you there. You've never felt poly? Amorous? No, my last name's Zagrophis. Last night we played hide the rattle and I still haven't found it. I can hear it. What's up, fellas? Okay, I idea where Gerard is, I'm supposed to meet him here. Oh, oh, okay, so I should probably let him finish first. Yeah, don't worry about him. You can entertain us. Me and Chaz were just discussing show and tell night in the bar in a few weeks. Oh, say, you know anyone who might want to present something that night? Yeah, actually, I... I, are you okay? I'm sorry. It's a remote control vibrator. Hunter makes me worried. Masters, <laughs> he's activated. Which means he wants me to, oh, I'll meet him in a dungeon. Get this. Nothing? Nothing at all? Say, you look like you used a drink on the house. What do you say? Gee, that's real nice. Normally I'd ask why Chaz is eating paper, but I got some free alcohol to drink. <sighs> Sorry, boys. I have to take a quick trip to the bank to make a deposit. Front door is that way. Oh, he's going to the toilet. You okay, buddy? Well, what's wrong? You can talk to me, I'm here for you. It has to do with me? Well, you can tell me anything to spill the beans. Edward came to the bar today. Holy shit, this must be serious. Just let me finish. This is, this is not gonna be easy to tell you. Uh, Edward came by to drop off some news. Um, his butt plug went off and he had to get pulled away, but he left it with Dennis and I. And we kind of accidentally on purpose opened it up. Um, yeah. It has to do with the all the 13 people who died uh, while you had sex with them. Now, one and two, they actually did die. Number one was for an overdose. The second one was for blunt trauma for hitting himself over the head two or four times with a two by four. Uh, yeah. Uh, three to 13? Um, they faked their deaths. I don't understand. I, why would they do that? I mean, wait, how would they do that? Edward didn't say how. Um, number three, he was a cop. And he had his cop friends help him to fake his death. Four through 13, they found out about it and they had him help him because, uh, well, because- Because what? The cop, it isn't clear why exactly, but the cop must have told someone what an amazing lover you were. Yo, props to you for that, bro. But everyone else, they just had to find out for themselves. But they did unanimously say you were one of the most annoying lovers that they ever had. And instead of actually ever seeing you again, um, they got the cop to help them fake their deaths. <laughs> you guys are joking, right? I mean, this this has to be a joke, right? Right? No, no joke. Shh. 
shit. I mean... Thanks for telling me, fellas. I gotta go. Oh, hey, 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 where you going?